Clarence, thank you so much for saying yes to this conversation. I am looking forward to it. Tell me, how many children do you have? Uh, four. I have uh, four. They are ranges in um, five, eight, 15, and 21. Five, eight, 15, and 21. Nice. It's a good spread. Oh, yes. How many, so how many are boys? How many are girls? I have uh, three girls and one boy. Okay. 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 Um, what do you think are the, uh, the, 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 the biggest differences between the girls and the boy? Wow. Great question. Well, I, I think from my experiences, uh, it has always have been, for me at least, uh, dealing with girls, right? Uh, as it relates to being their uh, first male guy in their life, someone that they really uh, can relate to, protect, right? Uh, and, and be able to have that courageous conversations and ask their dad anything uh, before they start dating, right? So uh, uh, I've always been able and had a soft heart for all my girls. And then uh, the boy come along, right? And now uh, you, you start to look, wow, he looks like me. Uh, he does pretty much everything and has a temperament somewhat like mine. And, and uh, you can't at many times for me, it's kind of challenging to deal with that because you're looking at uh, the travels of the roads that you traveled and, and you want him to be uh, um, successful and you want him to be outgoing, right? But he's uh, sort of like just re reserved. Uh, and you would think that from raising three, three girls, you know, he would be more outgoing and, uh, 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 and uh, uh, ready to be willing to go where I go and be my sidekick, but that's not, have not been the case. He's a, a, a mama's boy. So he likes staying close knit to mom. Right. Yeah. And, and the flip yeah. side, my girls, they love being with me. Right. Yeah. And uh, so it's the flip side. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's only five, right? Yes. So he's still really, really tiny. Uh, I, so I, so I'm, here's what you, here's what your story made me think of. I remember the, um, <laughs> silly now as I think of it um before my first <laughs> child was born you know so I was preparing and I decided to you know and, and I was preparing in my mind rather now this was before I bought the book I, I, my, my thought was man I can't wait until I'm going to teach this boy how to ride a bicycle and it's going to be so exciting teaching him all of these things as you know they're babies for so long they're like I was way off like thinking you know, I mean, I was, I, you know, it, it took what, like maybe seven, eight years before I actually taught him how to ride a bicycle. Right. So there's so much life that happened um, that, ha that I needed to think about. And, and, and they're babies and in diapers for such a long period of time. Um, but, but you made me think of this because you, you're like, I want him to be successful. But he's only five. And he's such a, you right. know, he's such a baby still. But I understand you, you're, and especially, I guess, part of maybe the reason you're thinking that way is because, you know, you have a 21 year old. So, so it's, you, you, you might be like, maybe fast forward, maybe you might be thinking too far ahead because of, because of where he is in the lineup. Yes, I totally agree with you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you uh, because you want him to cover a lot of grounds and I, and I never thought about it while wow, he's only five and, and that sometimes I try to compare and that's what I, I try not to do as, uh, as an edu educator is trying to compare right students right you try to pit one against the other yeah. uh, but everyone has their own personality right yeah. and I think his personality is is somewhat relax and reserve and where now he wants to be around mom and and not dad although some of my co-workers they say wow Dixon I can't leave out the house without my five-year-old he's running behind me and he wants to be with me right so here again there are two yeah. separate personalities yeah 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 definitely you know you made me think of something I want to share with you right away oh uh, sure this, this is uh, for, for those for those people who are saying that maybe their children, their child is running, running after uh, them. This is a great workbook uh, that they oh, can try. Okay. 
Um, yeah. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's a workbook that you 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 know you 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 do uh, you read it to your child and you you help them understand that you know you're not going anywhere. You just you you know you're leaving the house, but you'll you'll be back. So helping them um, deal with with the anxiety that you know of of, of where's my parent going, you know. Right. Yeah. Um, but um, and, you know, the other thing that, that that I wanted to say as you were speaking about your boy. Um, and you're saying that he, 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 he may have a personality similar to yours? Yes. Yes. You know, and, yeah. No, and, I was going to say that. I was going to say that. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, and, and those are some things that you, uh, in particular, me, uh, that you don't want, right? You want uh, him to have his own personality. And certainly that will come. But you see some traits of yourself there. And you're like, oh, boy, it's not a good thing. <laughs> right but possibly a great thing yeah yeah <laughs> no you know it, it you know it, i i do know i have i have started noticing noticing that a, a lot of people pe- uh, people who, who believe that their children are like them they often struggle with it you know and and mm-hmm. i wonder if it has something to do with sort of like you know it's it's a little it's a little too it's a little too much mirror for me right and, yeah. and, and, and maybe, you know, we, we actually, it's interesting because we think, we think we know ourselves so well and yet, you know, sometimes having somebody point it out to us, it, you know, it's a little, it's a little uncomfortable. So I wonder if you might at times feel, feel a little uncomfortable that he's a little too much like you, because it's like, you you recognize and you go, Ooh, wait, what? <laughs> And, and, and that's so true because I had a, a conversation with my mother and, uh, and she were reminding me of some of his habits and things that he's doing at age five, four and two and three and said, oh, you did that. Oh, I certainly remember that. So now you're getting it back, right? <laughs> so, uh, so now if you've seen that from one to five, you're like, wow. So what does five to 10 look like? A maybe 10 to 20 year old may look like, right? But uh <laughs> Uh, having uh, 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 have been had the opportunity to be around kids at age uh, maybe uh, five to 21 and, and something certainly and watching them throughout the years uh, they do somewhat mature and come into their own mindset right into their own uh, um, individuality as it relates to what they want to do and how they want to think yeah yeah right. you know i when you talk about him i mean you know you you, you said you know he he likes mom um you know i i have i you know i have noticed that my boys have a very special relationship with their mother um it, i'm i'm almost i'm almost I'm, I'm not totally i'm not i'm not <laughs> i'm not almost i'm almost envious but but not really like i get it you know but I, but but I, I guess maybe my where 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 i'm okay where i'm where the feeling of being envious ends is the is the is the rec- is that I recognize how much my wife has done for them. Absolutely. I mean, really, I, she has literally done everything. Like I, I've I've been here every single day, but I feel like she's carried the entire. You know, like she's played all all positions in this game. You know, <laughs> she can she carried the entire game. We're winning because of her. Um, so I understand that that you know that 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 merits an, an, an amazing relationship, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, for, you know, for them. Um, you, you mentioned that you mentioned something interesting about your daughters and, you know, you know, f- for a long time, um, and, and you, you think that you, you, um, you say that you're the first male in their lives, right? And and it sounded like like a like a big responsibility that you were putting on yourself. Is that how you how you thought of it? Yes, yes. I, well, actually, you want in my mind that uh, it's not necessarily a big responsibility. Uh, I look at it as uh, um, what they're willing to accept, right? To have front load information on what a man look, looks like. Uh, uh, what his responsibilities yeah. are as it relates to a relationship, right? And whenever they become of age and they uh, line up a man and they say, yeah. wow, you know, work ethics, right? Yeah. Uh, family values, right? 
spiritual values, right? So hopefully those things will fall in place and, and those will, and some of those things, if not most of those things will be some checkoffs, right? Yeah. As to what type of man they are looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's uh, the reason why in my mind, I try to spend so much time with them, uh, quality time, uh, and, and most importantly, memories, making memories out of each time that I spend with them, right? If yeah. you just, just riding in a car, right? Try to make memories out of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so interesting. So, so the, uh, the, I'm sure the 21 year old has, has has she already introduced you to a boyfriend? And what were your thoughts on on him? Wow, uh, I remember. I think it was uh, prom. It, it was prom, and uh, and uh, and these. Uh, and, she, and, and, and and keep in mind that they live in Atlanta. So I was, I traveled there every other week until they became of age. So I came in town and she said, well, daddy, I, uh, I want you to come in town for the prom. Oh, very excited, right? Uh, I want to, and every time a boyfriend is always a friend, right? Right, right. So in their mind, a friend can mean totally different things from what a friend actually means. So I said, okay, can't wait to meet him. She said, okay, so uh, we, will, I'll be, we will be leaving the house around, he'll be coming to pick me up at 6 p.m., right? So I said, okay, your younger sister and I, we can run and go pick up some ice cream uh, until this guy arrives. So somehow we got caught up in, in a long, long line at, at McDonald's and, went, and wasn't able to get back. In time enough, so um, my uh, ex-wife Texas said, "Oh, uh, they just left." I said, "Oh, how magical is that?" She said, "But they just went down to the square in the town just to take pictures. No worries, I'll just go down there." So I texted and said, "Hey, Danielle, I'll I'll be right there. I'm I'm on my way. You guys just wait there." She said, "Oh, Daddy, but we just get ready to leave again. Really, you get ready to leave again?" I said, "Okay." I said, so th then I just pivot around and said, so uh, I said to my um, my youngest, so where's the venue? So I'm just going to skip the little square and I just meet them. I know I'll see them at the venue. So then I went down there at the venue and certainly uh, met the young man and uh, he was uh, respectful as a, a, a friend. And uh, that's the opportunity that I had uh, to meet him. And he's still there uh, as a friend. Uh, um, but, uh, like the type three, of men or young men, like three years later, you yeah. mean, right. Three years later. Right. Wow. So, uh, but, but then my comment and conversations w w were for him because this is wonderful thing that my mom told my, uh, first friend when I was, uh, start to dating that, uh, she said that, you know what, uh, Janice, he's going to kiss a lot of frogs in his life, but he, before he decides which one he wants, right? <laughs> so I use the same thing, right? Oh, yeah. Maybe 30 <laughs> years later, right? So I use the same uh, 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 comment and uh, he looked. <laughs> he was startled by that, right? Because you're a male, right? So th therefore you may be here for the moment, but would you be here for the long haul? Yeah. Right. So, uh, so, so, so you said, you said to him, you know, uh, Danielle, right. You said, Danielle's going to kiss a lot of frogs before she, yeah. You... Right. right. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to put something on his mind to really think about, right. Yeah. Because here it is. I mean, I mean, I think everyone can think about their first, fr first friend and uh, how long did that last? Didn't last very long at all. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Because you, uh, you grow apart. Uh, you, you college may call you for different city or state or something like that. And, uh, and, uh, things change throughout the years. Yeah. I, um, I wonder, and, uh, you know, go as far as you feel comfortable, three girls, you know, f from my point of view, big, big responsibility in regards to the sex talk. Oh did, boy! Did, did you? How did you manage that situation? I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I have to give it uh, credit to my uh, 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 today mother, mother, because I didn't have to have that talk with them, right? I, in my mind, I think that I was setting 
the bar high, right? As it relates to what this guy looked like, right? Uh, and when we have conversations, and if we were going to a supermarket, a store, or or on va uh, some va vacation, right? So I I will look and say, wow, shouldn't that guy pull his pants out? Wow, <laughs> that's a strange haircut, right? Yeah. And I just wanted to see to jog their memory or 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 to uh, start a conversation, right? To see what actually guys that they were attracted to, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and they just giggle, giggle, giggle. And I, <laughs> oh, okay. I said, well, what do y'all think about that? Yeah. Out here in public, what do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. I said, well, that, that, you know, they look at each other and they just smile and, and start giggling and, and giving each other sign, sign language. I said, yeah. oh, okay. I said, well, I wouldn't want a guy like that knocking on my door saying he's coming to meet y'all. Yeah. And they say, oh, and they, and they just giggle and, and yeah. not give me any reply behind it. Right, right, right. Okay, so, yeah. so uh, it, is it fair to say that you, 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 you don't feel comfortable going much further than that directly? Oh boy, that's a great. Uh, oh yeah, I, uh, not, not that directly conversation okay. with them, yeah. but I will go around it and, mm -hmm. uh, and give them the importance of life and how you should prioritize your life, mm -hmm. right? And that family uh, uh, can always wait, and more importantly, uh, uh, the um, uh, when you wanting to give yourself up to someone, right? Uh, what are the responsibilities, and more importantly, um, are the consequences behind it, right? Yeah. Uh, because you can find yourself in an uncomfortable uh, situation, so therefore, that's something that you want to stay away from uh, until you get in your mind that, okay, I, I am able to uh, take care of a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and here, I, I, I want to say, I want to say, uh, Clarence, that um, and I know that the sex talk is, is, is very uncomfortable for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But, but um, I have this, I have a very particular angle on it. And, and uh, because of what I do, yes, because of what I do for a living, but also it, it, it's very, very in me, I, I don't know how to say it. Um, I fear so much that, that, that our, our discomfort with the sex talk hurts a lot of our children. Uh, or, and if we, if we exchange that, if we, if I remove our children for a lot of human beings. And so, and so, and again, so I'm just sharing here, um, nothing to do with, with um, trying to convince you of, of anything. Um, but, but I, but I, but I, I do want to say that if you, if you can get beyond the discomfort, maybe we'll put it that way. If you can get beyond the discomfort, there is an immense amount of information that you dad can share directly. And if it makes you uncomfortable to have this conversation without your wife or your ex, you, you can always set it up. You can always say, you know what, honey, well, or whatever you call your ex, um, you know, my ex, um, how about, you know, can we all have a conversation? There's something I really want to talk to the girls directly. And, but I want you to be there because I want you to support me on this conversation, this sex talk, you know, because I, I, I'm sure that you have provided an amazing model for what they should go after. But there, there's also, there's additional information that you possess inside your mind about your own behaviors as a, as a young man, right? Um, and, and, and what I've always said is, you know, I, I wasn't, I wasn't a liar as, you know, as a teen, not, not like, I don't, I've never really been that, but yeah, I think I, it's fair to say that I, I stretched the truth as I attempted to, to have sex with girls. Right. And, and meaning that I think that it's fair to say that I probably did hurt, uh, you know, someone's, you know, feelings over time, um, because you know the the in the my desire was sexual intercourse. I mean, right? So, um, so I think when when that when that comes from dad, I think it's so very valuable. And and I know that I'm sure that 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 your ex has said all of these things. But again, I think there is there's um, immense value in he, in them hearing them from from their like you said number one um, male model role model right in their lives. But you know that's that's you know that's um that may be more than you can handle and i and i understand <laughs> it's heavy 
it's heavy. It, it is. I have to, uh, uh, I have to admit that that's something that, uh, uh, you, in my mind, right. It's something that you can't just pick up a, a novel or a book from, uh, Barnes and Noble and, yeah. and say, well, chapter five says this chapter <laughs> four says yeah. this, right. Because, yeah. uh, because all kids are different. Yeah. Right. And, and, and your approach, uh, to them is, is, is certainly a lot different than any normal conversation. I think that's a conversation that certainly uh, you will have to have probably with grandma too, right? With her in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. But you know, with right. you know, with with the little one, you know, the little one also. Um, and I know, and, and I know this is an uncomfortable conversation and, and I thank you. Thank you for allowing me to have it with you, Clarence. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, with the, the, the I'm going to say this again, I've said it a million times before for those who, who listen to, to these conversations. Unfortunately, statistically, the, you know, the statistics on child sexual abuse are horrendous. You know, it's one in five girls, one in seven boys or about there. And so it's, it's so prevalent that it's just happening everywhere. And the issue that I have is that we don't know who it is. It's, it, you know, it's the, the stranger danger is a myth, first and foremost. It, you know, that, that, you know, you have to know that stranger danger is an absolute myth. Um, it's, it's harm more people than it has done people good because we know that it's, you know, it's dad, it's uncles, it's brothers, it's, it's, you know, friends of the family. It's people that 90, I forget the percentage, but it's something like 90 and or 95% of all um, victims of child sexual abuse know the perpetrator, like know them. So, so it's, it's hardly ever, you know, someone jumping out of the van, uh, out of a van or out of the bushes and, 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 you know, doing something to you. So, um, and unless we have these conversations with, you know, with our children, they don't have the vocabulary with which to express what has happened to them. That's really, that's, that for me, that's like the danger. That's what's scary. That's what's scary when, when, you know, when, when we feel uncomfortable with having a conversation about something that is so absolutely normal, right? Um, anything living has to have had sex to 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 be so to be a living thing so but anyway i'll drop that um and we can talk about something else <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah. so um what made you have children well, what, what what yeah what what made you how did you get started 21 years ago Ooh, wow well, for me, I think that with uh, my parents, I grew up in a uh, two-parent uh, home, and my uh, mom, my mother, always stressed that education first, career, mm. education first, career, right? Yeah. And I can remember a lot of conversations, don't bring your, uh, any kids in this house right education first yeah yeah yeah. career second hey you can always wait on a family yeah. right so uh all of my siblings i mean that's what we did right we did not want to um disappoint mom or dad right so we waited uh until and i now when you ask i will be somewhat total uh told uh, against that because I waited so long to maybe after my first deg uh, a degree and my second degree, right? Mm. Before I ever thought about a family because I wanted to be able to provide for them, right? Uh, in a way that I thought that it was appropriate uh, and uh, to allow them to have some things, uh, a shelter, right? Love and all those things. So I did not want to bring a child into uh, this world or help bring a child in, into this world without having the necessarily uh, tools in place first. Uh, but now when you ask me maybe 20, 30 years ago, I'll say, you know what? You have to decide when it's best for you, but please know that the struggles will be hard if you don't have a strong foundation as it relates to additional education and a career, it is different from a job and a career, right? A, yeah. a career 
uh, sustains many, many, many years, but a job you're going to jump around to. Yeah. So, and that's what she stressed for many years. And, and that's what I have always preached to my girls, right. And my son and uh, pretty much all of them, uh, whenever that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what it, 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 it took me. It, that's why it waited for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I was yeah. like 31. 31. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's not, yeah, I was 33. Oh, okay, right. So uh, I, I was just so like, what if? I had so many what ifs. What yeah. if I'm not able to financially take care of this kid? Yeah. What if that I don't, I don't have a job? What if, right? Yeah. Uh, and I didn't want to be a failure. I had all of those what ifs, for sure. Okay. But first, for, and, and before that, um, I didn't want to have children. I, I didn't want to get married and I didn't want to have children. Plus, plus I had all of your what ifs after I, after I did get married. Um, however, m- my wife was so certain, like she's, she appeared to be so clear about, wow. about, you know, how the, how having a child or, you know, to children was she just seems so certain that it would all be okay wow. that I didn't, I didn't argue with it. Right. It was like, Oh, but I mean, I did ask her to wait like two or three years after we got married. Cause I'm like, I'm not ready. You know, year one, I'm not ready. Year two, I'm not ready. Year three. And she's like, all right, but we're doing this now. I'm like, all right. Uh, you know. <laughs> so I, you know, I mean, I, I said, yes. I mean, and, and um, I can't say that she didn't twist my arm. But it felt like that. It really felt like that. It felt like if you know, I I kind of have to do this. I feel like I, I felt like I was being forced into yes. it. Um, but it worked out. It really worked out. I, I had. It's like I I I I had. I just kind of like. I didn't put it on her, but I put it on. She appears certain and ready. So so I'm I'm, I'm basically I just decided to align with what she was giving off. And, and and it was right. It worked out. Yeah. But, but you know, at that, my experience have always uh, taught me that uh, one can, meaning your mate or a mate, can promise you that things will be fine and uh, we'll have the picket fence and, and and the big house. But looking through the lens of a male, looking through the lens of the breadwinner. You have, I have to feel that it's going to be okay, right? Yeah. Because they're going to tell you anything because they want that family that they are a little yeah. kid is yeah. looking at a uh, playing with a doll baby, the picket fence house and all those good things. But whenever things, whenever it doesn't work that way, they're going to look at, turn around, look at the mail. Hey, I told you, what are you going to do? <laughs> are you going to get a job? Right, right. Are, are, are you, what are you going to do with us? It's just me and the baby, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you have to wait out of always looking at, right, to do it on my terms as yeah. relates to am I able to afford a family, right? Because yeah, at yeah. the end of the day, they're going to look at the man to make sure everything is taken care of. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I put everything that I knew about her, you know, um, I took it all into account and, um, and it, you know, and, and so I, and, and I went with it and it worked out. Yeah. You know, I, I, I got, I mean, I, I see what you, I see, you know, I know what you mean. I mean, I know what you mean. I, I just, I think that what I ended up doing was just, you know, saying to myself, I've, I've, I think I've, I've said, and I've done as much as I, as I needed, I needed to in this situation, you know, yes. I got to pull the trigger and, right. and, 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 and the trigger I chose to pull was not to separate from this woman, but rather, you know, um, again, based on ev- all, all the variables that I could um, look at, uh, th- it was going to work out. And, and, and yeah, again, uh, but she, she, uh, she, um, it, it worked out again. I did the same exact thing when, when, when she decided that we had to own a house, yes. <laughs> the purchase of the house was also her. She's like, she's like, we're doing it. And I had been saying, I don't, you know, I don't know how, I don't know how it's going to happen. Right. Um, I know. You know, and I said that, that for I years. And then finally one day she goes, no, we're doing it. And I was like, all right, what do I have to do to, I, I can't lead with you because I have no idea how you're going to make this happen. So again, let me just get behind you on this. 
I'll align. I will not get in your way. I'll help you make it happen. I like that. I like that uh, uh, train of thought. I'll take that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes yeah. I, yeah, I tell you, you know, so I think that many of us might get, you know, as we think about many of us are, many of us, I think are stuck in, in the idea of roles. And this is a big theme for me lately. If, if we think that the that the role the 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 role of the husband is X, that that might be very that might be may, might be too rigid for for the reality of life, which like is where where each one of us is so uniquely different and our strengths aren't um, evident at the beginning, like you know, meaning meaning that I think that what's important what's what what's very useful for a relationship is for each one of the two to lead with their strengths but when you first meet somebody even after maybe like even even after five years of being with that person even after five years together you you know because everything is changing in life because of because so many things are are always in motion strengths don't don't appear right off you know right away even two three five years in meaning that allow if if without the rigidity of of a role meaning that if you choose to go with the idea of what's our you know what's my relationship with this woman right what's my relationship with this other person then if you look at it as a relationship then you then you then you are you can be more flexible like you were saying before there isn't a book for raising children there's also not a book for having a successful relationship there's an <laughs> in, yeah there isn't like there, there, there's no books for being human because there's just so many variables. It's impossible to put it in a, into a book, into book form. You know, there's guidelines because we, you know, we, that's, that's, there are books on, on relationships with, with um, partners and, or, you know, husbands or wives and relationships with, with your children. There are books for that, but, but not really a guide because if, if we're if we focus on the relationship with either uh, your your partner or your children, then it just makes it infinitely easier for you to know what to do, right? Because when you look at it as a relationship, you know this is this is interesting because here here's here's how in talking about fatherhood how how a role can hurt you in in in, in as a father. If you think the father is the one that is, that has to discipline and that. And, and it has to be done in a very specific way, especially from the past, you know, with, with the idea of spanking um, uh, or, or severe punishment, not severe, but like, like harsh punishment. If you look at it that way, if you look at it, if you look at your relation, if you look at fatherhood from that uh, role lens, then, you know, your child is going to be looking at you as somebody who he's not really interested in being with too much because he might just get in trouble. He might get a, a you know, a, a spanking. Um, and you know, and then if he needs something, he might not go to you because he's afraid that, well, what if I do need something? What if I set him off? And what if I end up getting, getting spanked for opening up? But if we look at, if we look at these as relationships, then you, the, the, what's, what's beautiful about it is we all know what a good relationship looks like. We, we really innately all do like, we don't like to get hit. <laughs> we don't like to get spanked. We don't like to get yelled at. We don't like to be reprimanded. Right. We don't you know, there's we know what we don't like. And as a consequence, right. we know what we do like. You know, we do like hugs. We do like I love yous. Right. We like good food. And, you know, so so we, so I think that sometimes what gets in the way of, of a good relationship between uh, dad and his, ch and his children. And it's a very it's very similar with that, with with husband and wife. What gets in the way most more often than not. And this is what I've, I've been noticing is the role, the idea of the role, right? But, you know, honey, my role is this one, right? And she's like, uh, yeah, but that's not, a, that's, that's not working, <laughs> right? I mean, yeah, but my role is this one. And she's like, uh, I'm leaving you, <laughs> right? <laughs> and your child can't say that, you know? Right. Right? I so agree. What you, yeah. What do you think of the what do you think of that idea of the of role versus relationship? Is that something that that appeals to you in any way? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I, I was just uh, thinking about that. I think that uh, um, I kind of like the role as a good cop, bad cop, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, 
in order for you to have a balance, right? Uh, because what happens, uh, the role that you're playing is not one of your traits or one of your things that you're good at, right? But your spouse is good at that, right? right? So I believe in uh, wherever you're weak and that's her strong point. And certainly I believe in uh, allowing that to happen. Uh, and that in my mind, it will allow the relationship of the marriage to grow, right? Because you, you're not just looking through the lens of saying, well, that's a man's role, I have to do that. Okay. But it may not be your strong points that you have, right? Yeah. Or it may not yeah. be something that you're natural born with, right? And she may be good at that, right? And uh, that's something that you have to let go. And it took me a long time uh, to uh, let certain things go, right? In yeah. order to build something, then you have to know uh, your limitations, right? Uh, and then when you know that, right, then I think that you can certainly grow with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you, do you happen to have an example that you feel comfortable sharing? Uh, wow. I can, I, I can share one if, if you, it, it, until you come up with one that you like. Sure. I, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, classic, classic male mentality, uh, um, in, in, in damaging, <laughs> damaging role situation that for me would have been to force myself to to do to to be the leader in the finances of the family right so historically right the you know men breadwinners you know the the, the father manages to find he makes the money so he, he manages the finances right i hate it i don't i don't want to manage i don't look can my check go somewhere where it miraculously does everything that it's supposed to do Cause I don't want to deal with it. I really, I don't want to, I don't want to see money. I don't count money. I don't want to, I got, I'm okay with making it. I just, I just don't want to deal with paying for bills and stuff. Right. And, and, you know, and as I was telling you, it, what, what happened actually, when we realized that, that we real it was, it was the purchase of the house that where we, when we realized that my wife was good at the finance of, of the, of the home, of the family, that's when that's when we all realized that she could make that happen. That she had the mind, you know, the 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 skills to to manage the budget. And I was like, perfect. You know, it's yours, right? right? That's right. That's and right. you know, and again, because you know, because I understood the difference between role and relationship, I I, was, I just like, no, this is great. And she she loves it. She loves that she right. knows she can do something that she's good at, right? That's and right. I go and yeah, you know, I go off and do something that I'm good at instead. I, I love it. I, I think uh, just I was going to uh, say the same exact thing. And, and certainly it was uh, finance simply uh, because she was able to excuse me, stretch it just a little bit more than I can. Right. Yeah. And me for me, it was sort of uh, whenever the kids want something. Sure, I can do that. Right. Uh, sure, I'll do that without thinking about, okay, now what's gonna to happen tomorrow, right? Uh, did you uh, make sure that you are you put something away for a rainy day? But I'm living in the moment, right? I was a type of finance, uh, finance guy, I'm, I'm living it in the moment and not thinking about the future, right? The next day, right? And uh, it, that was a situation, I said, wow, because a situation occurred and it was, are you ready for the next day? Are you ready? for that e emergency fund. And I, no, I'm not, right? <laughs> then it, I started to turn and pivot around and say, you know what, maybe I'm not good at this when you have too many of those courageous conversations, right? Yeah. And you look at yourself and you do some self-reflecting. I know at least I do. Now, how can I stay away from that, right? How can I stay away from those conversations with her whenever you know as the male of the house that, you know, uh, you have to be flexible, right? And you have to, if that's not one of your strong points, you have yeah. to give it up. And, uh, and, I, and I gave it up. And she said, well, you know what? I really don't want you to give it up, right? Uh, what I want you to do is to be, be, be able to manage it just a little bit more, right? Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. I, you know what? What does that look like? So, okay, so we're going to set up uh, your account, my account, and the bills account. Huh. Right. You know what the bills are. You know what they are. Yeah. So you make sure that yours is there. And have, number one thing that I 
that I love about it and certainly about her, she always said, Clarence, just be ready for an emergency. I'm not going to say that we have to put emergency fund out. You be ready and I'll be ready. So let's not find out. I don't want to find out. And I, and I won't disappoint you if emergency occur that we're not ready. All right. So, and it stayed with me of that letdown, right? What if emergency, something occur? Are you ready? Right. And uh, you don't want to look to your mate. Certainly I don't No, I'm not ready. Right. <laughs> right. So that's what it is. Right. So, so because yeah. the bill, the bills are not going to change. The bills is going to be what it is, yeah. what it's going to be each month. But we have a, a emergency car repair, right? Yeah. Or you have to get a water heater or something like that. Oh yeah. Other thing. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so good. So you had so so basically, you know, here's what I'm hearing. You had a conversation with your partner. Yes. You you had this the the, the, the discussion. You agreed on what it was going to look like. Mm -hmm. You were both comfortable with the outcome of the conversation, and you know, you move forward. Yes. Perfect. Right. And you have to stay away from those areas that uh, for me, uh, I mean, you know, some of those things you can try to avoid. Right. Mm -hmm. If you have those. Oh, I, I, Clarence, let me ask you a question. The, the your lighting keeps changing. Is that lamp? Can you turn that lamp on? Maybe that'll help us a little oh. bit because you're, you're a little dark. Let me see. Is that better? Uh, no, here you go. Now it's, okay. now it's, no, now it's, no, no, now it's better. Right. Oh, yeah. I have a, yeah, it's the computer over oh, here. Oh, the computer. Yeah, let's keep that one on, please. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so then you, you want to stay away from that. And how you stay away from those is just having those courageous, kind of uncomfortable conversations, courageous conversations that uh, yeah. uh, that I think that every spouse is waiting uh, to hear from their mate, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, because it, sometimes you have to have them, right? Yeah. As I look at it, you have to have a check-in, right? A mental check-in. Yeah, right. absolutely. Right. If you stay away from those mental check-ins all the time, then you don't know really what she's thinking or she doesn't know what you're thinking. If, yeah, if, especially if you stay away from them because you're afraid of hurting her feelings or you fear what the outcome of the conversation might be, it, it, you're, you're setting yourself up. Absolutely. Eventually, it, it's not going to go away. Right. Right. Absolutely. It's not going to go away. It's, it's, it's just like a, uh, a brewing uh, yep. cup of coffee, right? Yep. It's brewing. And, 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 and as I say, with the work that I do, it's like a Coca-Cola can, right? It's like a Coca-Cola can that the top is on it and you shake it up, right? It's shaking and you keep on shaking it up. And when you take it out, it's going to explode, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you're not having those courageous conversations or those uncomfortable conversations because it's going to explode at some point. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's yeah. when it's, it's all out of control. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to, I used to, the, 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 the pressure cooker. Um, yeah, I like that one. Yeah. It's going to, it's going to explode. You just, you can't, you know, you can't sweep, you know, real issues, real Required, you can't sweep real required conversations under the rug forever. That's true. You know, you, can, you can't, yeah. you can't. Um, I, you know, that, that's, that's something that I wish more people feel comfortable with. You know, you know, yeah. I, I talk to people about, you know, I, I remember for, for decades, for my whole life, I have always wondered, you know, I, I try to understand the definition of uh, good communication, you know, because everyone <laughs> says, well, you know, the, the, Right, the key to a healthy relationship is good communication, and 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 I and I, and I thought about it, and I thought about it, and I was in my teens, thinking about this, thinking about this, thinking about this. And a long, long time ago, late teens, I easily came up with the answer. As far as I'm, as far as I'm concerned, and and, and I, I know no better answer than this. A good good communication means to be able to tell the other person what you don't like about them. Yeah. To just to be able to say it. But, you know, what's interesting about that is, is that it, it sounds a little harsh, perhaps. But the first, as soon as you do, when you do it without malice or ill intent, or when you do it for the, for the betterment of, of the relationship, but right. when you do it, you know, you know, you have to be quite intelligent and you may screw it up the first time, but it, it has to be, it has to be, it has to be done in a way in which you, you you know that you are also on the hook, right? It's, it can't be well you. No, it can't. That'll never work. 
it has to be something that here I recognize something about you. You might be able to do it as in I recognize something about you, but I want you to know that I think I recognize something about me. How about that? Right. So, you know, you go, you know, you, you step into this ring, but, you know, both with one you know, one concern. And, and I tell you, it's actually, if you can't come up with something for yourself, she can. Right. She oh, can. Sure. <laughs> right. So, so <laughs> right. you know, I'm, I'm sure she can. I, I kind of, for me, what works is, and I try to share with many people, is the I statement, right? Instead yeah. of, uh, right, right. So I, don't like when you do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So you yeah. start off with the I statement yeah. instead of, well, uh, uh, you always doing that. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I statement, yeah. always the I statement. I feel uncomfortable when you do yeah. that. I feel uncomfortable when you say that, or I feel uncomfortable when you raise your voice, right? Yeah. So I think the I statement, yeah. is, instead of saying what she's doing, you're really saying what you're feeling uncomfortable with. Right, because you cannot, that I believe, that you cannot put words or feelings in someone else's mind or body, right? You can only, uh, you're only in control of what you can control and that's yourself and the words and how you treat others. Yeah, the, the, the I statement changed my life. I've yeah. said it before and I'll continue to say it because I do want the world, the entire world to know how to use the I statement. And I know that the I statement is not, it's, it isn't, it hasn't been normalized. It's not something that everybody knows, but I think that, you know, with enough work, with enough conversations, we can get the I statement out to more people. And, and, and exactly how you said it, the way that the I statement works is you get to share how you feel right. without, and without it starting as an accusation. Right. So rather than rather than Clarence, you make me feel uncomfortable, mm -hmm. which which will 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 dissect, will will study as to why that's a mistake. Instead of saying you make me feel uncomfortable, or you know your actions are affecting me in a negative way, it starts with Clarence. I feel uncomfortable when you talk to me that way. Absolutely. Right? I feel uncomfortable when you talk to me that way, and then the other person can say, well, you know. I don't care about your feelings. And then, well, so you shouldn't be with this person, right? I mean, right, right. I'm sharing my feelings, right? That's, as, that's right. as vulnerable as I can possibly get. So that's how the, the I statement works. I feel uncomfortable. The, 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 you, anyone can easily see how the, the, the accusation, when it starts with a you, that's, that's going to that's start, a, that's gonna start a, an argument rather than a, than a healthy Absolutely. discussion. Absolutely. And, and the other thing I think that people have to get used to is the idea that these conversations you know, there's going to be some that are uncomfortable, but they're not all uncomfortable, right? right? I mean, and, and it's okay to have some discomfort. And if, if, you, if you think about, if we think about growth, right? Right. I mean, you know, like you know, it's something as basic and we can, we, we can push this out, this idea, for instance, something as basic as, as walking, right? When you're a baby, right? Right. How, you know, how many times you fall, scrape your knee, you know, tumble, hit your head, right? right? Just learning how to walk is, is painful. That's Anything, right. any, but but it's totally worth it because walking is awesome. Walking no. and running is like the best. Independent. <laughs> so <laughs> so some of some of some of the greatest lessons, right? Um, you know, the, come at at the expense of or um, require, mm -hmm. you know, some discomfort. Right. I have to agree with you. Absolutely. And if you want your relationship with your with your with your wife with with this we you know with this idea of this one and only woman, which I think it makes sense for me, it makes sense. I think that marriage makes sense. I think that having one woman, you know, and you know, one family yeah. that That's makes right. sense, right? So, and I think that if you want to have a successful family, a successful marriage, a successful family, it's. That's an immense undertaking. I th I think that the problem appears to be that we're just not realizing how complex what it is that we're asking for actually is. So then we don't know what it costs. It's a lot. A lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Right. 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 Because you're taking, you're taking two mindsets and you're bringing them together. Right. Uh, you're bringing two people from totally different, totally backgrounds. Right. You can always say that I'm looking for someone equally yoked. 
what does that mean, right? We can assume in our minds was equally yoked, right? But then although, per my mother, we always say, the mind can't tell the heart who to love. And then many times that can be someone that's not equally yoked, right? Right? They may be the idol, the outer shell of someone, and you're and you fell in love with the outer shell, but then uh, and truly the inner shell, the uh, uh, the heart that you did not allow your time you you uh, to get used to. So therefore, then uh, uh, you have a lot. That's when a lot of building have to begin from that piece. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that we, we are definitely collectively, definitely not having enough conversations around the complexity. Absolutely. And, you know, what's interesting is, you know, it's something something that seem that should be crystal clear to to. But it isn't something that should be crystal clear to everybody is that bringing a child into the world is going to be an insane amount of work. And that that another way of saying that is it's going to bring an immense amount of pressure and stress to the relationship with with your with your partner. So so, you know, like it's funny because, um, you know, I also grew up with this idea of, you know, people say, you know, people saying, oh, you know, the relationship was on, you know, on the rocks. It wasn't going well. And so we decided to have a baby to make it better. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. So, so here, here's what you've done in essence. You've, if, 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 if the metaphor is you're on a boat and it's rocky, imagine you just added a lot of rocks to your boat ride when you had the baby. It's not, right. it's not the baby doesn't signify, you know, greater buoyancy. The baby is actually extra weight on that boat on the rocks. Right. <laughs> Ah, the idea right. Right. The, the idea that anyone ever came that, you know like when i think about how could some, anyone ever come up with the idea that you know, let's have a baby this will improve things it it it's insane it's insane i i think that's the that's the right word it's 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 it must be the definition of insanity but yeah. but 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 not completely it's, it's not entirely their fault i think that if you grew up and you're in, in an environment where, where, where adults aren't having adult like conversations, you may grow up think, you know, believing something, something as ridiculous, right. you know, that having a child would, would, would help any, any relationship, meaning, meaning adding stress to any relationship is the way to fix it. <laughs> yes, <I agree. laughs> It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree with you. That's just, it's just not going to work. Clarence, gonna... you you mentioned um, your mom and I think your grandma already. I was uh, I grew up with a, a very strong woman. I grew up uh, um, and no father. Did did you have uh, uh, your dad around growing up? Yes, yes, yes. I did. Yeah, I uh, most certainly did. He was there. Uh, uh, he was in a home. I was fortunate enough to have a, a mother and a father in a home. Uh, and, uh, uh, it was a, uh, wow, a great memories, right. As it relates to, uh, just hearing a, uh, a man's voice in the home and, uh, and teaching you things, a lot of things that, uh, uh, that in my mind that your father have to really teach, uh, teach you or not, or if he doesn't, you're going to learn it, it the wrong way and from the wrong person, right? Yeah. They, they're not going to teach you the right, as my mom would say, they're not like a cat is going to show you how to get up the tree, but it's not going to show you how to get back down, right? <laughs> so therefore that um, some, some of your friends may show you how to do something, but typically it's not the, the wrong way. And to having that male touch, dad's touch right yeah. hand on your shoulder right or just having that conversation of looking you into your eyes and letting you know that things are going to be okay right yeah. uh it was great it was great did, did you know? did your dad did was did your dad tell you growing up that he loved you uh no he did not i uh, he, he did not um uh, and wow that's a great question i could say no, he did not, but by his actions, I knew he did. Yeah. Uh, but now this new world, I think that you have to say that, yeah. right? I would have loved, uh, he expired early at the age of 51 of cancer. Uh-huh. I would have loved to to hear that more often from him. 
uh, now made it out of, I made it uh, just a ritual in my life, right? To tell my kids that on a daily basis, right? Yeah. Uh, that I love them, how much I do care. So uh, yeah. I didn't hear much of that, if at all, from him, but I, but I knew he did. Yeah. Right? Uh, his actions, right? Uh, his time, right? And the way that he did things, right? Uh, he said, Ed, come ride with me, yeah. right? So in my mind, that was saying, I want to talk to you, yeah. right? I want to talk to you alone, right? Yeah. Or um, and teaching me a trade. He uh, was a ceramic and marble setter. So he taught my my brothers and I how to become a, 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 a towel setter, marble yeah. setter, yeah. and uh, start his own business. Uh, but, uh, and that was something that he said, well, you know what? He said, son, you're going to make a lot of money, uh, being a, in the construction world, yeah. a, a ceramic towel setter. He said, but continue to go to school. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So you, so and, you're, uh, yeah. so you're, you're good. You're so good. I kind of knew that. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of knew that simply because that, uh, the wear and tear on your back. Can you imagine being on your back for eight hours a day, right? right? And and doing that work in the winter time, right? Yeah. Um, so um, yeah, but it's good work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, you know, I, 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 um, I love those. You know, uh, I, I love. Uh, I, I mean, the the uh, the work of an electrician. I think it's fantastic. Uh, you know, the the. The plumbers and and, and yeah, doing the tile work. I mean, yeah. good tile work is just it's 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 art. It's art. Yeah. it's art. It's art. It's 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 artwork. That's right. It's art. Yeah. 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 I I, I, I've done some some tile work and and I know what what it <laughs> what what it shouldn't look like. I know exactly what it shouldn't look like. It looks like my bathroom. Um, so right, that's because crazy. everyone say, "Oh, I can do it. It looks easy." Is okay. <laughs> it's not that easy, no, right? It's not. Right? Right? So, because you can go to Home Depot and get the book. Yeah. The step one, two, and three. But once you get yourself into it, you're like, oh, yeah. Now what's that tiles guy's number? Yeah, yeah. There's a reason why why it costs what it does. I'm sure your your dad was a real pro and and, and yes. an artist. Yes. Oh yeah. And you and he taught you how to do it early on. That's I love that. I always I love that idea. I, I you know if there's something that I wish. I wish I had had as a, as a child, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, aside from the obvious, you know, a dad um, is, is, is um, someone maybe, you know, I mean, ideally a dad, I guess, um, uh, to teach you things. I, I, you know, it's something that I, I wish I had had like, you know, valuable lessons to when you're young, when you can use some, you know, I mean, I mean, I imagine if your dad was teaching you, when was the last time, when was the first time your dad took you? I uh, showed you how to how to how to lay lay some tile. Oh boy, oh, it's ten. Uh, it was in middle school. I would say about eighth grade. Yeah, eighth grade. Yeah. Uh, but, but oh, although he was good on that side, but uh, 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 on the other side, when I say he wasn't, uh, uh, in my mind, when I look now, when you when I got older and been in, uh, uh, got married, that uh, marriages go through things, right? And uh, he wasn't the best person for her, mm -hmm. right? As you know, that some many couples go through things, and uh, uh, and as a child, we were always reminded that a child should stay in his or her place, right? And mm -hmm. not in adult conversations or an adult uh, problem. Right. Uh, so therefore, then uh, he wasn't, a, in my mind, a great father in that way as being a uh, uh, able to communicate effectively yeah. uh, out to my mom. Yeah, that, that's a um, that's a generational mm -hmm. uh, issue. Right. It was right. it was it was very much our parents generation and, and everybody before them to right. to sort of to separate themselves from the children and this, you know, in, in almost like this is adult world and you are in your in the children's and that's, I, and, and the reason I disagree with it. And I, I think you do as you appear to do as well is, is as if, if we just because, just because we bring children, just because I bring children in, in, into my, into my relationship with my wife's uh, world, 
during important conversations. Just because I bring them in doesn't mean that they're less children anymore. In fact, you know, interestingly, even though my, my children are pretty much like I, I have literally never said to my kids ever, ever, they're 13 and 14 now. I've never said you guys stay over there. I'm having an adult conversation with mom. No, 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 no. The more complex the conversation that I'm having with my wife, the more interested I am interested I am that my boys at whatever age have always been present. I want them to learn these lessons as soon as possible. I want them to be aware of what adulthood looks like. And and I am so proud that I've been able to, my wife and I have been able to to give our children an extended childhood. They're 13 and 14 children. And I love it. I'm like, it's wonderful. I had a conversation with um, Armand, uh, um, so a few, a few months, maybe a month or two back. And he was, say, he said something interesting. He said, he said, you know what, Ricardo, he goes, he goes in, 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 in society, in the U S today, we have decided that at 18, you know, the children, children have to leave the house, right? They're out on their own. They should, you know, and he, and he was, he said, he goes, that's ridiculous. 18, you're still, a, you're, you're still a child at 18. Yeah. All right. If you're going to school, okay. Maybe that makes sense. Go ahead and, you know, maybe, you know, Maybe if you have to go to another state, that can be done. But the idea that we have to push them out at 18, he goes, that's ridiculous. And I hadn't thought about it until he said it. And you know what? I totally agree. Like, I remember when I was 18, I was a big dummy. I was an, eight, I was, I was, I was an 18 year old dummy. You don't know anything. You're, you're still, you know, as an 18 year old, you're still practicing talking. You're still practicing walking. You're still practicing thinking. It's like, you're just, you're literally just, are, you're just happening now. You know, right. we're talking about your five-year-old. Well, imagine at 18, you're still like, you know, you have, you, you know, you remember that, that, that young boy that, that took your daughter to the prom, right? You know, you looked at him and he, and you went, oh my God, this guy just got out of diapers literally just got out of diapers right that's true that's, that's true. when you saw him you were like oh. that's <laughs> right a, he's right. a child right. Right. and but, so and so um i might have gone off on a, on a slight tangent about you know but it's i think i think it, 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 i might be able to bring it back to the idea of relationship i want to have a relationship with my boys yeah mm-hmm. and in that relationship there's n- nothing's hidden it's all it's all absolute it's just all transparent yeah look I'm going to say this and I say it every time. Some things are age appropriate, right? You have to be cautious not to hurt them while you're trying to help them. So obviously we're not going to use language that they're not going to understand or that it's going to be harmful for them. Yeah, okay, I got that. But aside from that, which, of which I'm aware, right? I'm aware of what I'm doing. I want them there. You know, I want them to to learn that this is this is the way that they want to, you know, they should want to communicate, right? Mm-hmm. Um. But um, yeah, it's it's too bad that he wasn't able to. But he, you know, he, I mean, he was a child of a totally different generation. Absolutely. I mean, it, that was yeah. I mean, I can't even I can't even begin to imagine what his childhood must must have been like. Yes, that must yes. have been like. I mean, yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I think one, uh, and some people say, well, generations cursed. So uh, I think that uh, most parents try to raise their child uh, the way that they were raised, right? And that's the only thing that they know. It's right? the, yeah, that was, right. that's what was and, modeled. Right, right. And they try to uh, pivot away at, at, at many times and look at maybe something like um, uh, Father's Knows Best, right? And look at one of those shows of the Brady Bunch or something like that in you. And you just take your childhood and something that you see on television and you say okay that's what I want mine to look like and you try to model your home around that but you don't know that uh, it's only a fairy tale and something that's certainly just on television so it's a lot of work a lot of work around relationships it's uh uh you're, you're always growing and you're always building and more importantly that I found out you 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 continue to get to know that person it never mm. stops so, you, you know, you hear people that have been married for 35 years. Oh, remember my wife for 35 years? I know that woman. <laughs> uh, I don't think so. I remember uh, my that's dad. A great, that's a great line. <laughs> yeah. And, and I remember riding w- w- 
with my dad one day and they be and he always said it i mean i don't care when you get married you all when you wake up every morning you should say good morning stranger because <laughs> you don't know right you yeah. they're unpredictable yeah. yeah right so someone said well no i know what she's gonna do uh, i don't think so they're unpredictable Every yeah, I think I think I, I you know I'm uh, yeah I'm gonna say that anyone listening to this who has ever said I know I know that woman or I know what she's right. gonna do is completely <laughs> wrong and right. needs That's to right. needs to do some serious introspection. Absolutely, absolutely, uh, because we're growing and we're human, right, right, and every day we're growing, and uh, at many times I'm sure you know with relationships. And if you heard with some, some maybe friends or family, they can easily grow apart, right? Because right, you can have good intentions, but then you 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 can easily grow apart as well, yeah. right? And and what it takes to build on that is to continue to show that affection uh, towards an, uh, yeah. one another, and always be able to have that courageous conversation and not shut that person down, right? Uh, and, and I say that to uh, to allow them to to grow, to speak, to be adventurous, right? And you share yeah. some type of common uh, uh, things that you like about uh, one another, right? And continue yeah. to grow uh, with one another. And I, and I think that's the most important thing that you continue to grow uh, in a relationship with each other. Yeah. Right. And you can never say, well, hey, we're there. It's 35 years. And uh, yeah, uh, I can't, I mean, we can't grow anymore. You can continue to grow, right? Right. You can continue yeah. to share. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's good. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. You're, I, I like, I like the way, the direction in which you're going. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, there, there, yeah, I think, I think that what we have to try to do is to, yeah. So we have to recognize that we're always changing, recognize that every like every day has the potential of bringing something into your world yes. that is going yeah. to change the, mm -hmm. the lens through which you see it. Right. Right. Because she can wake up one day and say, well, you, you know what? We joined the bowling league 30 years and we yeah. left it together. She one morning, she don't want to bowl anymore. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm done. And uh, right. And she could have been, you could have been living in their shadows for so long. Yeah. And that was a conversation. They knew that you was compassionate about bowling, how much it, it, you loved it. So I lived in your shadow for so, for so long. Right. Yeah. And you didn't yeah. allow that, that person to grow. Uh, and then I think that you were in, I think you're in trouble then. Yeah, you get yourself a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you you um you were you were you were married. Yes. To first. the to your to the to the to the woman to the to the mother of your first three children for about yes. 15, 15, 14 years. Yes, we met in college. And, and you know, it be hearing you speak. Uh, it, it, are some of your some of these amazing lessons that you're sharing? That's where it is. Did, did they come from that first? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. It, uh, it was brutal. So uh, it was a life lesson. Right. Yeah. It came from there. And uh, you can't uh, be bitter about it. Right. right. Uh, because people grow apart. Right. Uh, and you have to learn to respect someone's vision on where they want to be and not yeah. what you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because I was continue always working on and so concerned about my career, my career uh. it took me back until my uh, when I was a child, that what my parents' values were for us, right? You get your career first, right? Right. You get you go to college. You go. I mean, all that was paramount, right? Never spoke about a relationship. Never yeah, right, yeah. spoke about what marriage looked like. Oh girls, right? man! So that wasn't the case in her mind. Her case was, don't you bring any kids in this house? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then you, and that's when you, for me. That's where I struggled, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, because when I, when never she came along, I was st still clamming and 
and looking for that career. And and I'm sure she told you many times of what what the what you were maybe were lacking a little, and you just oh, couldn't yeah. you couldn't hear it. You couldn't oh. you couldn't hear. Be, yeah, because because your 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 mom's voice was so loud. But oh. yeah, right. It's under. I mean, you know, it's it's, it's, it's I, tough. That's tough. That's a tough yeah. one. Yeah, and simply because it, you didn't want to see what failure was, mm. right? Failure to provide for your family. Yeah. Right? Failure to have a decent um, a, uh, a career, right? And I continue to say that, a career. And I say that to young men and, 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 young, and, and young folks that get yourself a career. Right. No one can take that away from you, yeah. right? Career survives through pandemics, right? Yeah. A job, yeah. A job does it. Yeah. Job, you're not going to survive, but a career you will survive. Yeah. Yeah. And and, the, and I'd like to define, and in, in, I'll start by defining career as something that you love to do. Absolutely. But then that can be like a relationship too. You can fall out of love with that. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can fall out of love with it. Uh, I, yeah, you can fall out of love you, with you it. You could. Yeah, you could. But I mean, so yeah, but but the 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 lessons learned while you're doing something that you believe you love or that you do love, right. you know, the lessons are so so much more impactful and valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. And and then do you use the same tools when you uh, when you don't love what you do anymore? You have to give it up. Mm. Do you use that in a relationship? I don't know. Do you? When I don't, uh, I mean, uh, no, no, because I think with that, you are continue to build, hmm. right? Right. You have to continue to build on that, right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. A, right, but a career, you can be maxed out, you know? I mean, you could be at your max, right? And, and, you, and you live that life you lived your career so much that now your career is you and right. now that turns into your relationships it turns into your kids right yeah your is your kids and 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 that's what i never wanted uh my dad always told me if you have to come home and continue to do your work that's that's not a job right yeah not be able to leave leave work there some relationships you know yeah. I had a lot of friends and I don't want to talk too much, certainly that uh, they, uh, they never saw their dad, but they had all they wanted. New bicycle mm. trips, uh, two vacations a year, but dad well, they, was not there. Yeah, no, they didn't have, well, they, all the material things that they thought they wanted. But I think that it's fair to say that, you know, we, we would all trade, you know, all the bicycles in the world for, for, <laughs> for, for hanging out with dad. That, that is right. clear. That is clear as day. It is in the literature. It is. It is in. It is everywhere. Everyone yeah. wants yeah. a dad around. Every yeah. Every you know, I mean uh, absolutely. I, everyone wants dad. I mean, Everybody I, wants dad around. Think, right. Even the, the the football coach, even the teachers. Right. Yeah. Uh, everybody wants to see dad. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and, oh, well, and, you mean? Do you mean do, when you say football teachers, football, football um, coaches, and teachers? Do, do you mean? Do you mean uh, they they want the the dads in the lives of the children that they're coaching and teaching? Absolutely. Yeah. They no, that makes a big difference. It, it makes yeah. a big difference, right? Okay. Because when they make that tackle, when they make that basket, and they look up and they see the big smile on dad's face, man, that's paramount, right? Yeah. Now, right, my dad is proud of me, right? And that's what, it could be a girl or a boy. I right? do think that you're going to have a healthier team, a healthier classroom, right? Yeah. You're gonna, you're definitely all around when, dad, when dad's around. Absolutely, I, right. I believe that. Right. And, and, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that uh, we don't know, or they don't know, or some may not know how powerful uh, uh you are in, uh, in a strong relationship, strong family, and certainly with your kids. Yeah. 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 The, the, uh, the, um, can you, can you turn the, the, the computer screen back oh. on? You know, okay, the, sorry about that. thanks. The, um, 
oh, I, did I lose my train of thought? Courageous and adventurous is the way that you have described uh, important conversations. Yes. Uh, those are those are fancy words. <laughs> I I I've I've used scary, frightening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, these are the ones that you call courageous and adventurous conversations are extremely scary and frightening. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but you're right. You know, I mean, I think they should be viewed. Um, they they should be, uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, they're uncomfortable, but they should be viewed as courageous. Yes, yes. Uh, because if not, then I think someone can, anyone in a marriage, on your in the workforce, your kids can misinterpret what you're trying to convey. Right. Mm. Or your intent. Yeah. Right. Because they can take it out of it and say, oh, he really doesn't mean that. Right. Because someone can. Yeah. Yeah. I, I believe in in having those conversations because. Uh, uh, it shakes out a lot of things. Right. It gets you straight to the point. Yeah. Right. It's no chucking and jiving. It just gets you straight to the point. Right. Yeah. And I think that. That's what most people want, right? Let's get straight to the point, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, yeah, it helps rid your life of a lot of ambiguity. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I'm telling you exactly what I want. I'm telling you exactly how I think. I'm telling you exactly how I'm feeling. Right. All right, super clear. Now you go, right? It's like, now right. you tell right. me what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you want to say, and where you'd like right. this whole thing to go, right? Right. Because, you know, so many of these courageous conversations are about things that have been happening. But at the end of the day, the courageous conversation is intended to change the future. It's intended like to change that. the path that you're like on. That. It, you, like you're, that. you know, you're going to change. And you're right. like you said, and this ties to what we were saying before. You're always changing. So it's almost like saying, like, not answering a question is still an answer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Not answering a question is still an answer. So just because you're ignoring it doesn't mean that you're not engaging in the conversation. It, you're just you're just ignoring it, meaning that something Ooh, is happening. I like yeah, I like that. I never looked at it that way. Never something is yeah. Way. Something is happening. It's just not what it's going to be in your best interest. It, it's right. not. You're you're immediately you're, you're you're drifting away from that relationship, whether whether it's with your with your partner or or you know uh, the you know your wife or your you know the, the mother of your children or whether it is with your children, with right. your children. If you're not having a courageous conversation with your kids, right? Well, okay, right. What's going to happen, right? When something does break, and it doesn't have to be something terrible, but when when something does doesn't go right in the relationship then you have yourself to blame because you chose right. to not have the discussion right and then and, that's and that's that's the issue with not having conversations that then what you have what you in be begin amassing is regrets you know what you have the most stuff in your toolbox is regrets not real tools you know you filled it with broke you build it you filled it with broken tile <laughs> can't do anything with that. I like that. I, 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 I like that. I never thought of it that way, that whenever you are ignoring something, you're still not helping the conversation. Oh. I never looked at it that way. Never yeah. looked at it that way. But it's something to, certainly to look at moving forward. Yep. It's, yeah. It's too bad that your dad wasn't able to say he loved you, but it was, it was not common for, for dads of, uh, of that generation to, to tell their, ch their children that they loved them. It wasn't common. I wonder why. Why do you think that was the case then uh yeah. was well, it was it a macho thing you think so um i mean we can i can tell you that the reason that my mother didn't do it was and she told me this was because uh the what the experts were um preaching at the time was that um to be to be um loving and caring and showing affection to a boy would turn him gay. Wow. So, you know, as much as she wanted to do it, she didn't want to do what she thought would be a bad thing, which was, you know, to, but it, it all sounds ridiculous now, but it didn't sound ridiculous then. Yeah. You know? 
you know, I mean, my, I, I consider my mother an, an intelligent woman, but if that's, this is what everybody knows and this is what's normal and true, well, then, you know, it makes sense that she would do something like that. And, and you know, it, 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 uh, criticizing the past with, through the lens of the present is, is, is very dangerous because if you think about today, you know, we have cell phones with the entire, you know, history of humanity in them. Um, so we can look and, you know, if, if my mother was to, to, you know, to question whether she would turn me gay or not, she would just Google it, you know. <laughs> It's saying I love you to my boy, turning game, turning, and of course it'd be like, no, you know, it was speak it, you know, um, but they they just didn't know, and and you know, the, for instance, you know, I'm I'm an avid reader, and you know, look, uh, you know, even 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 before Amazon, you know, brought me my books like the same day, um, there were there were infinite bookstores everywhere Barnes and Noble when I was growing up was already yeah. everywhere so for for you know yeah. like with thousands of titles you know when, right. when when you know when my mother you know was you know a young woman a young mom um what bookstores uh, like what libraries yeah. you know I mean there were right. some but you know I she was busy like you know and he's your dad you know he's laying tile he's like I'm, I'm not gonna go find a book store somewhere I so i can read right, <laughs> right. It, it just wasn't there <laughs> no wasn't there. a 12 hour 12 14 hour day laying tile i think i'm done yeah you know right right <laughs> didn't have time for you right and and uh uh to that point um i can't i was a uh, swimmer um in high school and college and i can remember that my parents were never at one of those uh meets uh, because in their mind, per them, I can't show up there. I got to. I have to go to work to provide for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Somebody's got to clean the house. Somebody's got to do cooking. Right. right. Somebody's got to pay the bills. When do you think it's going to get done? That's right. So they they it, yeah. it just wasn't there. It wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, it, it just wasn't there. And I thought from now when I look through it, those lenses. They thought by working and providing yeah. a roof over your head. There is saying sending a nonverbal verbal conversation to you that I love you because yeah. you have somewhere to sleep, yeah. you have somewhere a shelter over your head. But uh, but I think uh, you need more than that, and and it branches off to relationships, right? You can think that you can be a man and keep a job, and it keeps the relationship, but uh, it it's, it's, it takes a little bit more um, that I found found out the second time around of communication. It's better than any uh, yeah. right communication and that, and that dialogue consistently. Uh, yeah, dialogue. all the time. And now you can. Now you can send text messages with "I love yous." Right. I was just thinking about you, buddy. Right to your kids. That's right. Right, that's right. or to your daughter. <laughs> hey, baby, love you. You know. And then, um, and that's what typically I did. I, when I fix her lunch, I just took her the napkin or the Kleenex yeah. inside of her lunchbox, yeah. and um, she opened it up, right? Because those things that I try to live through what I didn't hear a lot yeah. of, uh, the things that I knew that affected me, I try to now give overflow of that yeah. uh, up to my kids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I... I um. I, I love that. I don't. Yeah. I wonder what is what's what our kids are going to do with their kids, you know, because you know, they because they heard, uh, you know, our affection uh, so much. But I got to tell you, it's not everybody I work with. Uh, I work with. I have a lot of clients. Oh, yeah. Okay. Who I have to tell very often, <laughs> please tell your kid that you love them. Wow. Right. When was the last time you told your child that you loved them? And they'll, they'll go like this. Mm. I'm like, oh, OK, there it is. Don't answer that question. I already know. You're not doing it enough. <laughs> no, that's yeah, no, it's it isn't obvious. It's it's not no, obvious. But I, but I yeah. thought that it was an it was two generations ago. I thought in my mind that these millenniums will. I mean, that's something. I mean, I thought that everybody does it now. Mm -mm. No, wow. no, no, no. It, it it's um many of us learned it uh because we knew what we didn't like that was that's how i you know that's how i picked it up that's how you picked yep. it up many yep. you know it's not it's not the same path for everybody just because it wasn't done for you so so there's this is interesting per, what, what, I, what i call and i don't know if it's an actual term if it's an actual term or not but what i call perspective-based parenting is something that isn't obvious to everybody meaning 
in in in, in perspective based parenting, what you do for your kids, what you love that was done for you, and you don't do to them what, what you don't do what you hated that was done to you, right? But curiously enough, there is a percentage of the population that will rep, that will replicate that will that will do what was done to them, good or bad. It's just it was modeled. They'll execute that model, right? With no no questions in between. It's just, but you know, I don't know what percentage it is, but yeah, not everybody's evolving. At some point, you know, maybe 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 those children, the children of this person I'm talking about, or of these of this cross section of the population, maybe they'll be like, oh, you know what, my mother didn't say, it. you know. So it's interesting. I don't, I I. I who knows where this whole thing is going to end up, but certainly it has evolved, it evolved. It certainly, it absolutely has evolved. I mean, the idea that the, the, the quantity of, of the population that is being more caring towards each other absolutely is increasing. We see that, we see that everywhere. Um, I think that too many people might be, uh, might be caught up in, in too many toxic YouTube videos, but I think that you can also find equally, you know, or you can find many, many more um, healthy, positive, loving type videos out there, you know, of people improving their own lives and that of those uh, whom they uh, care for. Good. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow. How, how, how can I say this? Do you think that a percentage, a large percentage of kids did not hear that in the, um, Afro-American communities, uh, or, or do you think, is there a subgroup of, um, uh, of um, kids did not hear that? Mm. Or do you think it was just shared around all uh, emphases? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't have, um, I, I, you know, I, I would imagine that the, the, the books that I have on parenting are, must be, I don't, I'm going to guess that most of these books are written by, by, uh, by white people. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know that either. I don't know. Right. I don't know what it looks like uh, between whites, blacks and Hispanics, at least. Right. right? And th definitely no, no idea on Asians and in right. other cultures. No, I don't. Yeah. Mm -mm. I, it's not a breakdown that I've been, that I'm aware that even exists yet. I think, I think, I think it doesn't because it's just so new. You know, I like it, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I'm sure that, you know, I, I yeah, it's an interesting, my, my, my concern, my concern with, 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 uh, and, and I, I don't know enough to talk on this, but, but here's, here's what I'm imagining about, about the, the African-American community. This is all based on the little bit that I, that I know that, that they have had such a difficult time just just like, you know, just surviving because they've been under so much stress and pressure even until, I mean, I probably, I could, I don't know, I'd guess even now, you know, um, that, that maybe there, that maybe uh, this is, and you cor correct me, you, you, you can correct me yeah, where, where I'm wrong. And, and I think that, that, that immense pressure that, that has been put on them by, by the white community has 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 kept them from being able to really explore the love because there's so much fear. I mean, like I I've had conversations where I've wanted to, and this is where this is. Let me let me tell you where I'm going with this. Oh, I've had conversations with with African American uh, dads where I've asked them. I said, "Why do you tell your children to keep them safe when they go outside?" And the question comes from from what I've learned from, from, from the world, you know, that it's not safe to be black, mm -hmm. you know, like, like it's not. And so, so when it isn't, I would imagine that some of what, some of what has to be removed is, is the love because, right. you know, it's almost like you have to, you have to, you know, that, that to be safe, you almost have to remove yourself from, you have, you have to what, like, like, like push away some of, some of the beauty of what, what, what life should be. Right. Right, totally agree with you. Yeah. Uh, that I think their focus, right, as it relates to uh, focusing on the home, yeah. right, focusing on rearing the kids, right, 
the educational piece, right? The mom role, the dad's role, right? Uh, the, the role of the kids, right? Because I believe that everyone has a role in the home, even the dog, right? Guard the house where everyone goes to school and work, right? So that focus shift, right? Yeah. And I think it, it, it shift towards how am I gonna manage financially for my family, right? How am I gonna, per dad, how am I gonna stay in my family? How am I gonna stay in this home with my family to be a role model, to yeah. be there for my kids, right? Speaking from the standpoint for that African-American um, man, that is, a, that is a lot of pressure, yeah. right? To certainly, I'm not gonna say stay on the pedestal, to keep that going, to keep that going, to keep that career going, right? Because you, you're constantly trying to dig and get to the next one, get to the next one, get to the next one. Uh, when I say next one, meaning next promotion, next degree, next pay scale. Then in those travels, you're leaving a lot behind and you're meeting behind because you're supposed to be there, right? All right. You leave your kids behind. You haven't been to the games. You haven't went to their bedroom to actually read a book with them and say their prayers with them, right? To build that, to make memories that they believe and they can take on to their family. But you're constantly trying to really, uh, goes back to that career, right? Yeah. And then, and you're trying to fight all day. And yeah. uh, because of the, uh, you're staying uh, yeah. on plus, right? Right. Um, it's a lot built into that. It's a lot, certainly it's a lot to impact. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's how I see it. I I, I see I see that that uh, it, it, the 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 um, having to fight daily, mm -hmm. for, like at all time. I just I think that that, that this like, there's there's too much. There's I think there's still too much racism that yeah. that is just so harmful that that is so damaging to the family because like because like you said, here's dad and he's trying to do all the right things, and he would like to come home and maybe read a book, but on the way home, he was, he was harassed by somebody, but just because, right. you know, just because he's black and it's right. like, and, and, and to come home after like, maybe, you know, I, I don't know, this is a, this is the way I imagine the, 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 the black struggle, um, you know, that, that it's just like daily there's, there's just this ignorance that is, that it, that permeates society, right. It, you know, uh, whites and non-blacks, um, in the way that they communicate with African Americans, that is that is just that is that is ignorant and uncomfortable for um, for them for for you know for the black person, right? It's like uh -huh, right. where people are like, and this is where this this is this is an example where 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 whites and in or or non blacks try to connect with blacks by by using certain jokes that they think might be witty, but mm -hmm. but for the African American, it's like mm, no, you don't you you're not getting it. And, and we're, I'm talking about stuff that, that <laughs> way before the N word, way, way, way. I'm talking about just way. Be, and this is how I, this is how I envision it. You know, right. just yeah. like mm, no, that's not a good joke. That wasn't funny. No, no, no. It's uh, and, uh, yeah. Wow. It's, it's certainly a, definitely a lot to uh, unpack with that one uh, because of the the normal way of life that I think that a, a person of color have to think about it uh, when my child leaves, is he coming back, right? Oh my God. Right, That's when I go into a grocery store, uh, uh, am I gonna get followed around in the store, yeah. right? Right, uh, so those things, and I had with my some classmates, he said, oh, I never thought about that, yeah. right? And I look at it as um, um, uh, white privilege as it relates to when I get stopped by police, I have to put my hands on the steering wheel, right? Turn the light on, right? And when you look at the, uh, 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 the other individuals, they're really giving the officer a lecture as to why did you stop me? Who is your boss, right? 
Yeah. They right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have your job, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the opposite, right? And in in that, and you then know, you look at whenever someone come and appraise your home, right? Yeah, they're gonna give you a totally different sell price than they will give someone else, right? Yeah, because they can yeah. say your oh, well, the one down the street was worth it sold for four sixty five. Yeah. And then when they go inside, whenever the inspector come, five, six hundred grand. Yeah. Right. So there I, I read this book. Uh, and it was the courageous conversations that everyone should have with an African-American male. And uh, uh, and it goes around. Uh, uh, what does that look like? Right. Uh, oh, I just. Just lost my thought with that, but it'll come back. I just, yep, yep. Uh, just That's okay. That let let it and let it let it let it rest for a second. It'll come back to you. You know, I I what I what I did, and now I I I'm I'm brown, but I it I, I'm brown, but I don't feel I didn't feel threatened until Trump was was um, elected, and really? he yeah I didn't feel threatened in in, in this country until he said, you know, those Mexicans coming over the border. And the problem with that comment was that my wife is Mexican. I'm Colombian. My wife is Mexican, but my children, for whatever reason, identify as Mexican, which is annoying as hell because oh. I'm like, um, excuse me, <laughs> you're Mexican and Colombian Americans. Um, right, but, it is great. <laughs> so, but what happened is, right, and, right. and this is, this is when I got a little taste of what it might and I, again i don't know so, so i'm making you know this huge assumption black. of what it might be might be to be black because i had to sit down and say to them hey guys listen i heard what the president said about the mexicans all right let's have a conversation ar ar around this to make sure that you're safe right, right? and i think that that's right. sort of that you know the, the the i was able to get some of that i was able to like understand right. the, the the a little bit only a smidgen i'm not gonna you know i look i i i'm really just 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 enough just enough right. i was able to understand just enough about about the 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 struggle of the uh, of the black man in america right uh, to, to to just enough to 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 it from within grow great respect Right. Just like, all right, hold on a second. I, I, I it may, basically it made me realize I know so I need, I know so little that I must just remain, I must remain open to yeah. it all. Right. Just, right. just like hang back, no assumptions, just listen. Right. Right. Um, and, 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 you know, I think that, you know, unfortunately I don't, you know, if you're white, you're never going to be threatened by the president, as long as I president, right? I mean, so 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 a lot of white people are not going to have that moment that I had that that was very useful for me because I I want to, um, you know, I want to to understand my community, right? Right, absolutely. Because if I, I I've always said to uh, that try when someone said, well, I really don't know. Well. I don't know why y'all feel that way. Or I don't know why. And I try to use yeah. the uh, analogy of trying to run a race and they hold you back until that person laps oh, yeah. around at least once. Yeah. yeah. And they let you go and they let that person up said, you can catch up. You can do it. You got to work hard. Pull yeah. your bootstraps up. But the only way for that person to catch that other person is to literally put him in a car, lap, bring him around, yeah. or stop the other person from running for you can catch up yeah. to make it even, yeah. right? So, we, so with, with that and with that being said, you never be. It's not about catching up, right? It's about doing what's right as it relates to reparation, right? Yeah. When the Jews, right? When they gave reparation to the Jews, right? Yeah. So you can look at how was this country built, right? Yeah. What sacrifices have people come from color made throughout yeah. the years, right? And it's right. So we can it's certainly there's a lot to impact with that. Uh, to say, well, you know what? They, they don't want to go to school. They don't want to work. Black people are the laziest person people in the world, right? 
So uh, it takes takes me back to that. People time. still say that, yeah. But let yeah. me ask you, that's ridiculous. It's absurd. It, what, what a ridiculous comment. That, but but and, uh, let's not even go there because um, yeah, the oh, back to fatherhood. Can you share with me what are some of the things what what what's what what have you said to your daughters to, uh -huh. keep, the, to keep them to keep them safe, right? Um, you know, beyond beyond the girl boy thing, but rather from from a from a color perspective. Can you share some of the things that you've oh, you've said to them to uh, um to be fair, to be honest, and be yourself, right? If you're fair and you're honest and you're yourself, right? And you are authentic, right? Everything else will work out, right? And more importantly, uh, if you believe in the, uh, uh, have a strong spiritual base, right? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that all certainly should carry you um, where you need to go. And certainly you have to believe in yourself, right? And more importantly, you have to love yourself. And that's the conversation, yeah. certainly to love yourself. You can't expect anyone else to love you if you don't love yourself. You can't yeah. expect for a man to love you. You can't expect for someone else if it's not coming, if you don't love yourself, if you're not comfortable with the person who's looking at you in the mirror every day, good or bad or indifferent, right? Yeah. You have to be able to continue to love yourself. Right. Yeah, that's that's a thinking. that's a tough one. That's a tough one for for any color teen. Yeah. Any white, right. black, yeah, whatever, any color teen. But yeah, right. in 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 the case of non-whites, I think it's harder because it 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 would it it, it appears that that the, the the media is is like it's media seems to be white primarily, right? right. The, the the magazines are mostly white. And so I would imagine that, you know, for Latina girls and 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 African American girls, it's gotta be like it's gotta be like it's so confusing that we don't see ourselves. It's changing. It's changing, right? But it's it's gotta be hard. I mean, 13, 14, and you're, and you're trying to fit in and you don't look like the girl on the magazine. Well, that that's when from the parents uh, perspective, you teach them in my mind and uh first of all i think uh, uh to love yourself right because you i mean you can search for love and acceptance all your life even uh in your in the adult world yeah. and you will never be accepted right but uh, although if you love yourself you believe in yourself then you can do great things right and you, can you can't worry about what someone may say. Yeah. How can you teach that? What What have you? What have What tools? What have you used to teach your daughters to to love themselves? To um, what's the word? Value. Value. Right. Uh, uh, to value themselves is to is certainly uh, 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 to love everything about uh, 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 about yourself, and that goes with the texture of your hair, right? The shape of your lips, right, right, and for many years they said, "Oh, I, I, I may be too. Uh, um, I am not as smart as my, my counterparts, but mm -hmm. everyone is certainly smart in some way." So, so you build that uh, th that character base up, right? You, you you build that up within them, right? The skills that would certainly would take them a long way of loving themselves, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and that's what I certainly have always yeah. said, that, uh, uh, to love yourself certainly and believe in yourself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I think you said, you, so, so I was looking for something a tangible, tangible that, that you can, that you can teach that we can teach our children so that they value themselves. And, and you said the word skills. And I think that what it requires is that fathers are so actively present in the lives of their children that they're, they're, they are just almost, almost by virtue of just being present, teaching skills. And somebody, someone with a lot of skills is likely to feel their, their value, their worth, mm -hmm. because they know what they can do. Right. So even though there's, you know, look, as a 13, 14 year old, you're always going to struggle with, you know, body image. 
because there's 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 always that's always going to be in people's minds that, that right. we, we cannot that's just part of the the developmental process what do i look like compared to other people because that's how you know that's right. how you know that's how, that's how you know where you are where you stand the problem is when when the when the response that comes in the that returns from you like your own right. response to the question is uh but i'm not pretty enough right or i'm right. too heavy or i'm not smart enough but the thing about the thing about these is those can be offset by skills taught by dad well you know i might not be the best looking guy but i can lay some serious tiles so i know that i can make the money so that the girls you know i can take i can take the girls out to nice dinners and they're going to like me then right That's so right. so there, i think there is a tangible way to making to making our children be more you know be more able to value you know themselves um in a very in a very difficult complex reality the world is very very complex for 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 all kids mm-hmm. right but surviving these early stages these 18 20 or so years is, is, is extremely critical to their long-term success is, is this interesting 20 years is very it's a very short period period of time and in terms of for a human being they really you you sort of become self-aware at 13 so at 20 you've maybe been around for seven years or so but you're going to be a, you're going to be a human an adult human for if you live to 70 right another 50 years so so it's it's very important this is this is so important here you know, so many dads that that when the baby's born, they're like, I don't know what to do with that baby. It, it doesn't, you know, I can't throw the ball at it. You know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't even crawl yet. You know, I can't go, I can't play football with her. So it's like, no, 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 no. Oh, you got like these are the most important years. If you can invest, mm-hmm. invest, you know, like like spend the next ten years at least, at least ten just just give ten years of your life to this child then you're good to go. You don't want to be there anymore. That's go. True. But you've done an amazing job in just those first 10 years. The, the, mistake like is when, the mistake is when dads say, well, you know, I'll come back when he's big enough to throw the ball, play ca- to play catch. Uh, you're too late. You, you missed the opportunity. You, there's, there's no coming back. It, it's gone. You've, you've wasted the opportunity to be someone of true value. Yeah. That's right. I like that. Wow. So it sounds like that you're saying that you only have a ten a ten year window. I mean, I, well, I mean, I think that if if you if you if you wanted to condense it to what's the what's the what's the least amount of time that I should that I have to be with this kid? Oh, what a nightmare! What's the least? Yeah, like make it ten years, and then you can go away if you feel like going away. But you you won't, of course, like you won't, that. because now you have you will have yeah. built a re- an amazing relationship with somebody relationship. Who, you, who you totally want to hang out with. That's right, right, and 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 I think that's something uh, that something that a dad can't stop because you don't spend 10 good years yeah. building a relationship. So that's something that you will certainly grow on, something that you can cherish. And every time I talk with someone, and that's my number one thing, make memories, right? So, uh, so here, here's one, here's one, listen to this one. This reminds me of this idea. The reason women, or I think the vast majority of women do not leave their children is because they have a nine month investment. This is my kid. I grew this kid inside me. And I think that maybe something something similar for men might be once the baby is born, give one year, 12 months to that kid completely. Just dedicate one. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Just one year. Give one year to that baby. Mm-hmm. If you, I, because I bet you that only a small percentage of the male population after that, after that one year of investing time an effort into this human being, only a small percentage will be able to leave. And because it's for the same reason that the mothers don't leave their children because it's their investment. This is my child, they say. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I guess so, because you grew them, right? And so, <laughs> you know, but, but, but we, the problem is that we have, we don't have that. We're like, right. you know, we had the best part of it, which was sex. Yeah, right. right. And then I was like, oh, we got to take care of a kid. But if we could say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this child the, the, the best shot. Like I'm going to give this the best, the, the best I got for, for, for 12 months. See, see what happens after that. And I right. think that, w- that would be amazing. I think the world will change. That's right. I, and, 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 and I definitely like that 10 year window. Uh, but that, but then it has to be 10 years of consistency. Yeah. Right? You have to oh, be yeah. consistent with. Yeah. No, right? no, it's, 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 it's uh, yeah, it's an investment. 
Right, right, absolutely. And then, and, and many times, I, I was tell my kids, I want a good return, right? I want better <laughs> return that the stocks I can give me or the banks are giving you, right? <laughs> hey, oh, what are you talking about? I mean, I am, I am investing in you to get a good return back, right? Yeah. And what is a, a return? I, and I say this about my uh, twenty-one. She's uh, applying to. Uh, medical school wow. at um uh what's her name uh, uh and, and i didn't know this uh, uh morehouse um medical school and i say uh i said you know what the only thing i want is one trip a year back out of this out of uh, everything she said i said yep just just say dad hey where you want to go uh <laughs> pick it and i'll go right so um yeah <laughs> not much to ask for and, she, and they start laughing and say okay that's what i'm gonna do i'm not asking for anything just send me on, on one trip a year yeah and they say you know what i'm a, i'm gonna do that right and i say hey you know what that's the return that i'll get back and just be yeah. the best you can be yeah no you know i gotta tell you man i i'm i i i have my bar set a lot lower i think um oh, my wow. return on investments comes from i it's a, a, a thought and a, a, a statement that i believe was attributed is a tri- being attributed to um John Lennon, which is when they asked him what he wanted to be when he grew up. And he said, happy. And I tell you, if, if all I get out of, out of everything that I've done, all the love I've given these guys, my boys, is that they're happy. Oh my God. Like done. I'm happy. I'm good to go. I'm, you know, like, wow. Boy. Wow. I'm going to have to chew on that one a little bit. Wow. (laughs) I like it. Um. Uh, wow. I'm gonna think about that. We're gonna ha- have to have a part two to that one. Right speaking of part, two, <laughs> speaking <laughs> of part two, man, like time right. has flown talking That's to you. That's it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. 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 Me too. Me too. Uh, really because great. I think. Yeah. Uh, yes, I could. I, I can agree. Happy, right? You want them yeah. to be happy, right? And you want them. Me. I want them to. When I'm gone, and uh, I want them to be certainly happy, yeah, and be able to take care of themselves, and um, um, in a way that society and life would not uh, put them in a position to doubt themselves, yeah. or, or more importantly, to dictate where I'm going to live, what am I going to drive, what I want out of life, right? I want you, them all to be able to write the check to determine what they want out of life and not someone else saying what you can do, right? And what that takes is a decent education, a hard yeah. education, right? Can happiness give you that? Happiness can't write a check, right? <laughs> right? You can be content, right? But uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work to be able to uh, go where you want to go in life to get yeah. what you think that that you want, not that what life want to give to you. And what that takes is hard work. You put it in early, you, you certainly, you will be able to get a good reper- return. That's what I call return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. you have a lot of your mom in you. That she- Yes, she, but then I, and, and then that's what I th- we have to have a part two because I spoke <laughs> to my sister and, and my brother and, and certainly I would love to introduce him to you. And uh, because- we say when we get together, oh, I don't know about that. Mom kind of screwed us up because all three of us waited to have kids too late. Right. Yeah. Right. You chase the career and you're like, uh, I could have did this with, you know, because you can never predict because you're going to manage how to take care of a child anyway. Yeah. yeah. You're going to manage how to make it. Right. Uh, because when you have them late, then you have to, uh, you have to look through the lens a different way. Yeah, it would be interesting to 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 um to hear her explain where where that idea became so important in her mind and how she decided that that's how she was going to um to help you and your and your and your siblings uh, in yeah. life. Like it was such an important. Yeah. You know, it, it, it you know I got to tell you you know it it was tough for women before they before they um enter the the workforce and i would imagine that for an african-american woman even you know must have been even you know so much harder they just weren't the jobs even after women right. were allowed to enter and so 
I would imagine that what she was telling you, she was, you know, it was, it was the right. lens through which she grew up, which like no opportunity without work and with our career, without, you know, with our career. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and education was paramount. I rem remember in primary school, my mother saying, uh, the first one of my kids that gets suspended from school or a teacher call, uh, you know, you're going to get the worst outcome of me. <laughs> and you knew that was a hot spot. Yeah. You knew. And I don't, and I don't do that with my kids now because of going back to your other converse, our previous conversation of that uncle can be touching, that teacher can be touching a child. And they're like, oh, my dad said, oh, no, a, a, a teacher can't call. No, and I let them know, you, you know, you can be vocal, yeah. right? You can say, oh, no, Miss Johnson, I kind of disagree with you. Yeah. To allow them to grow. But no. when I was growing up, you couldn't say that. The teacher was right. <sighs> yeah, it was different times, man. And God only knows what mom went through, you know? I mean, yes. God only knows. Yeah. what kind of childhood she had and you know and and nowadays we know about you know childhood trauma we understand that we understand we know i mean there's it's or at least it's more common for you know there, there's there's more therapy piece around and, and they're in and it yeah man that's you know I, I i'd like to hear i wonder what's what are some of the things that she might have shared with you about her childhood like that, that were that were challenging for her uh, I think uh, the education component. Yeah. Right? Her parents. Uh, uh, when I ask about him, her dad, he did not have a high school uh, yeah. education, I think, because they grew up in the South, right? North Carolina. And I think they had to work the farms early, right? Yeah. Right? Work Mr. Jones' farm, not necessarily their farm, because, yeah. you know, there were seasonal things seasonal cropping that you had to do and education was not important right and that's what i always say when i if i'm talking to and i talk with someone elderly on my job but education was paramount and i said well now how old are you and i try to you know you try yeah. to maneuver yourself so it was key there but not key there yeah. and you guys are the same age so uh but you, but you never know someone's struggle right uh, that they had to even survive, right? Yeah. Uh, and I never try to, to question someone's uh, ability to show love to their child, right? Uh, because yeah. you weren't there, right? Yeah. You can only move forward. And that's what she's always said. You, you know what? You just move forward, right? Is, is, she, is she still around? Yes, she, she's 77. Oh, she 77, yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, she, did, she, did she ever say that she, what she would have studied could she have gone to university? Yeah, wow. She want she wanted to she want she went to culinary art school. She she loved cooking. Yeah. Uh, but I think then uh, I always ask, well, mom, you know, is that really which? And then she pivot away because they went in, away to um, being a nurse assistant. Uh, and uh, she, you know, that in my mind just wasn't enough it was just a job and not a career right uh and uh, when i asked wow that's a good question never asked was because she now she say that it college is not for everybody now she changed huh college is not for everybody but when we were growing up it was for everybody but now <laughs> we, yeah when i when she hit me Everybody shouldn't have to go to college. Everybody don't want to go to college. Everyone is not college material. Right, right. right. And that's and that's true. You know, what I what I say to my kids is like, look, go to school only when you know what it is that you want to, you know, what you what you want to learn. I mean, do not go to college and get into debt or or, or have me waste my money just, you know, <laughs> for you to figure it out. Figure it out before. Before I spend my money. I like that. Uh, yeah, of course. And then and then you can go. It, you, and this is this is the, the the crazy trap is that everyone needs to go right after high school. That's that's ridiculous. You don't have to go right after high school, especially if you don't, if you especially if you don't know. Considering how expensive university is and how expensive borrowing the money is, we and, and I think that was what has become to a lot of people obvious and clear today is um, 
how expensive the interest rate is and how long you'll actually have to pay to pay that money back if you're not doing something that you love to do. Because if you're not doing, if you, if you graduate with something that you don't absolutely love, you're simply not going to be able to really, really, truly compete in the market, meaning that it's going to take you many additional years to pay off that debt. So right. um, I, think it's a, I, think it's a, I think it's a scam. I think that, 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 you know, that, that whoever put this together is taking advantage of, of young people. Um, but, uh, but once you, once you figure it out, yeah, I mean, university, right. I mean, for some things you don't need it. And in my case, you know, I, I had to, I had to go to school for, um, uh, for my master's because, because there's no way to enter into this, into therapy without it. Um, so I had to do it, but there's plenty of things that you don't have to go to school for, um, you know, but anyway, that's a that's a whole other. I'd like to talk to your mom one of these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, that'd be yeah, fun. Uh, yes, yes, I'm sure it would. She's, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you can get a chance to speak for my brother before her. <laughs> <laughs> Cla- by, by the way, Clarence, you did say that you were going to be joining us uh, last uh, last Thursday at the webinar. Yes, and, and uh, you Thursday. didn't. I didn't, uh, what was going on last Thursday? Sometimes, uh, certainly, uh, to be honest with work, that's right, that's right. And I remember calling Dante and I said, hey, he said, yep, I'm on the road. I'm going to jump on for a minute, but I will be there. Yeah. And I'm sure he did. He texted me, said, hey, because I didn't see you. He did. So because uh, it's a uh, matter of fact, and, uh, and, and I'm going to get back to your question. When, when you're on Zoom from 8 o'clock to 4.30 in the morning, right, and with two kids and certainly an oh. uh, I had a uh, homeowner association Zoom, and I just didn't even go to that because, you know, I'm done out with Zoom, right? <laughs> so you're sitting on this deal and you're with a five-year-old on his yeah. schedule. I'm looking at yeah. that. He, he's at an <laughs> 80, and then he, do, he does independent work. Then he get back on nine, independent work. He's back on at 10. 12 independent work and to and and in the, in the midst of you having zoom meetings right and you're doing your work that you do uh and sometimes you know then 10 is good and i said you know what i'm just gonna jump on i said no i gotta go downstairs to the office and get on but i plan on being on the fourth one of march oh okay okay, okay. dante yeah, did, yeah. he did he did show up and uh, he was in his car and he hung in there yeah. for a little bit and but he had yeah. to turn off his camera so I, I didn't really get a chance to spend time with him because he was busy, but but it was nice to yeah. see him a little bit. Yeah, it's, uh, it was, he was coming, traveling back from a funeral. So yeah. uh, and I said, yeah. well, at least I could have done that. Uh, so uh, next Thursday, uh, I would definitely be there because I saw the website that they, uh, some, some other men join in and now yeah. as a part of the men's group. So I did share the link on my Twitter page. Yeah. And uh, certainly I'm looking forward to... Uh, certainly being a, a, a part of this uh, amazing work and this great conversation, because I think this conversation certainly, it need, uh, uh, it is a, uh, a, a well-needed conversation, right? Yeah. That many men uh, uh, are struggling with, and, and, uh, and I think they certainly can find the answers with you and, and, and this wonderful work that you're doing. Thank you, Clarence. And thank you for being with me tonight. I have absolutely enjoyed our last two hours. It, they went by like 